Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your weekly update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim, and today we're having an open mic show on using media to generate support for nonprofits. Special guest Jim Shadler is joining me to uh, keep things interesting. He is Director of Leadership Giving of Goodwill of Southern California. We just actually did a two-part series uh, with uh, his organization initiated by uh, him and through a discussion. And he's had a really interesting career as a recording artist, nonprofit fundraiser, marketeer for a whole range of nonprofits. Jim, thanks so much for, for joining in. My pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Jim, you've had a fantastic career, so I have a burning question. Okay. What's it like to record with John Paul Jones of, of Led Zeppelin? <laughs> I mean, it was, it would be surreal, except for it was, you know, months worth of just getting to know him and, and just sort of basking in it. But my biggest regret of the whole thing is that since we were both bass players, everyone else in the band got to jam with him except for me. <laughs> you know, it's really amazing that sort of, connection and, and that career arc right as an artist as, as a as a session musician um, and then being able to then transform this into the kind of, of fundraising that you do right now and the attention getting that you do right now could you talk a little bit about the connection between uh, art getting attention for for art and getting attention for nonprofit organizations issues and leaders you know for sure the fit to me, marketing is really about being agile and just sort of knowing where you are in you know, what's available to you. I was in a band back when it was really about tacking up flyers on telephone poles on Melrose Boulevard. And you know, that's where you knew your audience was and that's what you needed to do. And over the course of time, that has certainly changed. Um, I think obviously now being online, being the web is the tool um, you know, perhaps more than television, more than that, certainly uh, less expensive than some of those standard means of communication. Um, and, you know, my approach has always been, it's it's not, you know, who you know, it's who knows you. Um, and uh, in terms of supporting art, supporting education, supporting good causes, it you know, people want to help, people want to support. You know, maybe not everyone, but so many people do. And you know, if they can, they have the capacity to to give. They have the willingness to give. If they don't know about your mission, you know, they're going to give to somebody else. And it's about you know matching that affinity. Um, so you know, oh, it's, in it's, a band, it's, you you make a flyer that sort of shows the personality of the band. When you're in a an organization, you need to, to show people that if they invest in your nonprofit, what are the results? You gotta show people that have been helped by your organization. You need to show that your organization knows what it's doing. Um, and you know, those are really the, the keys. You know, for Goodwill, our, our challenge was that you know, most people say Goodwill, they're great, I've heard about them. Everyone around the world has heard about Goodwill. What do they do? You know, they have some thrift stores and they do some good. Um, with, with, when COVID happened, it's not just the health crisis, which continues to affect society. What we noticed in Goodwill is that so many people are out of a job. Right. And, and with all the changes, people might be out of you know, an industry that may never come back. So in, in your case, when we did that two-part series, what your challenge was that you wanted to make sure that people knew not only about the stores and the retail operations and the donations and so on, you wanted to talk about jobs. You know, when we, when we do work on environmental uh, nonprofits, uh, the real issue is how do you create action and consciousness for the need for action? And there are different actions that can be taken land conservation, clean water, clean air, uh, the issues around climate change, if we don't get the word out, then it doesn't matter how great the leaders are. We don't have the force of the public behind those actions. You know, when we, when we talk about art and supporting artists, if we don't get the word out, nobody comes to the shows. Um, if, if we're talking about caring for children, if we don't get the word out, it doesn't matter how great a, a leader we might, we might have for an organization, right? If we don't get the word out, then the funding doesn't happen, the volunteers don't happen, 
So, so that's really the question. If you look at the situation right now, and I want to throw this out to our attendees, and please do uh, participate. We, we're very interested in your ideas because we're trying to actually improve the situation in a systemic way uh, for nonprofits using the platform of M Oppenheim TV. We're trying to produce uh, shows that help you get the word out. So we want to improve. We want to hear from you. Um, the, the real question is, we can't afford as a sector to compete for advertising on broadcast networks, right? We can't afford to just do 20 second spots of, of public service announcements because people, it sort of goes over their heads. It's not engaging enough. So how do we actually do this? Do we do it through blogging? Do we do it through producing our own articles? Do we create our own uh, shows? Do we uh, work in, in partnership with organizations like, you know, the M. Oppenheim folks or my, my company to get the word out? How do we do this, Jim? I mean, you're not just working with, with us, you're working with others as well. How are you approaching this? That is exactly the uh, issue that we were dealing with. Um, so when, when we recognized that nobody really knew that Goodwill is an expert in workforce development, and job placement, um, we started this do good, do goodwill campaign and it is just ramping up and being on your show and the nonprofit profit report, that is you know, one of our, our first endeavors because we realized that that is the space that we need people to, to recognize us or one of the spaces. We're not just looking to you know, advertise to the general public, we want partners, we want to be uh, you know, in the conversation in the nonprofit space where other people who maybe are dealing with veterans or homeless, um, you know, our friends without homes in Southern California, um, people uh, with intellectual disabilities, everyone who's helping people who are part of the crowd that we're helping, um, you know, with uh, barriers to employment, we want to talk with them. What are they finding out? Like, how do we reach the people that, that maybe need services who, who don't even realize that they're there? How do we reach the people who can help us serve these people and, and combine forces? Because, you know, every nonprofit you know, is strapped to a certain extent. We need to work together in order to help the people we want to help. Um, you know, part of our... We got a question from uh, Wafa Kanan, and uh, by the way, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to uh, put you on uh, live, Wafa. Um, but um, just, and if you if you want to do that, just just raise your hand um, through the system. Um, but one of the things that that uh, Wafa said is that we need to do public service announcements. My question for the group, for all the listeners, is whether public service announcements are enough, right? If you get a a 10 second spot on, on ABC or CBS or on uh, one of the other channels, Fox, and somebody gets up and says, help goodwill, right? I mean, you're not gonna say no, but is that the kind of engagement that really brings you the, the kind of attention and the textured attention you need for your work? I think that, you know, that's great, right? We, you want to have whatever exposure that you can have. But I think the issues now are more complicated than can be addressed in a public service announcement. I mean, you can say, if you haven't noticed, there are a lot of people without jobs. If you haven't heard, Goodwill is all about jobs. Help us now. That's great, but I think people want to hear a little bit more about what's going on. And, you know, not to, uh, to pander to you, but I have to say this format, it, a half an hour is a great amount of time to, to dig a little deeper, approach the issues from a more sincere point of view than what might come off as just an ad. Um, you know, maybe the, someone hears the public service announcement and then they see something like this and they can really go, oh, I've heard about that, let's find out more. Then you're really building that affinity and people have a lot of choices, right? And what they're gonna support. People maybe don't care about just one issue. So they're making decisions too, they wanna hear you know, what's really going on? What has, what has this organization done? Whether it's a museum or a social service organization, they wanna know if they are gonna decide to invest their hard earned dollars, what is gonna be the return? And I think on a, on a PSA, you can give an impression, but 
a discussion, you know, amongst, you know, thought leaders, that's the kind of thing where people say, all right, that is an institution worth supporting. They've been around they're or they're going to be around They're They're, they're like me. They see what's going on. They see an issue and they're doing something about it. So I'm going to let Wafa come on. Uh, let me, let me uh, bring you on here. Let's, uh, Let's try and, uh, and and get you to unmute. And and uh, Wafa, are you are you around? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, James. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about this whole idea of of more textured um, uh, interactions with constituents? Well, I, I think it's really important at uh, this time, especially with COVID nineteen, for all nonprofit organizations to come together and really like. Uh, highlight what they have done and collaborate on a campaign. And when I say public service announcements that it could actually bring in all of these nonprofits within you know, certain demographics and say, how can we uh, celebrate what has been done? How can we overcome the challenges? And then come up with a public service announcement where the media can get involved and you know, be behind. Uh, so if it's homelessness, let's see how we could tackle if it is, you know, um, lack of jobs, let's see what we can do. Maybe the collaboration with also with the ADD, for example, you know, maybe. So the, the partnership is very important in my opinion at this time. You know, you're, you're raising some really interesting uh, questions. Oh, and by the way, we can accommodate up to three guests simultaneously on this stream. So if anybody else wants to join in with Wafa, please uh, raise your hand. But you're raising some really interesting issues. I mean, one of the questions that we can look at is topicality, right? You mentioned homelessness, right? We could actually cross different organizations and we try to do that in our nonprofit report series where we have two or three guests simultaneously. But you also mentioned demographics. I mean, we can also take a look at the kind of, of uh, issues that affect certain uh, peoples uh, and, and identified by uh, gender or orientation or race or, uh, or uh, level of, of, of income. We can look at geography. Um, how do you think we should put these shows together to, to engage, keep people interesting, interested and, and get to the point where they are learning enough to take action in their own communities? You know, I guess, again, it's it's the partnership. Um, maybe it, there is a council, maybe it's a COVID-19 council where, you know, different organization heads could come together. Uh, you know, the, the executive directors uh, of various organizations could come together. Uh, that could be maybe, uh, you know, the, the governor could be the, the head of that and say, what can we do if we're focusing only on, of course, on California, because I'm not sure. Um, but obviously, because Goodwill is in California, so I'm thinking it's California. So if that's the case, then I think the governor and the, the executive directors of different nonprofit that they actually uh, share that core values, they should come together and, uh, and do a council and then also do some kind of a campaign, of course. So it's the campaign that is gonna bring that awareness. I'm wondering whether we can just, as nonprofit leaders, whether we can just take action ourselves, not wait for government, not even rely on, on any third party. Um, can, of course we can. It just only, it, you just have to share all of these values and say, can we, can we come together? And, you know, maybe Goodwill could uh, speak a lot about, um, do they have partnership in place with other nonprofit organizations right now? I'd be very interested for those who are attending who produce content, how they um, are getting uh, their word out. Um, if, if anybody would like to contribute uh, that intelligence to the group, uh, that would be just terrific. Um, uh, Jim, you had said something, I think you said it quite unconsciously, maybe as, as from your background as a, as a musician, you said people want to hear, right? I thought that was interesting. It wasn't people want to read, it also wasn't people want to view. Do you think that that in today's media world, it's the rich media piece, the the um, the oral piece, listening to things through podcasts or viewing things that is the dominant way of getting information out and creating an interactive uh, interaction with well, the, think, uh, with the public? 
Yeah, I mean, what I think is key there is the human element. I think sometimes if you if you read, you can get lost in what maybe the wonky weeds, right? You you want you you want to know that it's people helping people. You want to you know these days it's hard to visit, right? You, it's hard to you know, come and see, take a tour of the of the program, take a tour of the museum, come take a tour of the college. That doesn't happen. So I think right now a challenge is to be as human as possible while getting the message out. If I get a, a, an email that's just words, yeah, I'll read it, but then I don't feel like I know anyone any better. So I think you wanna hear it, I think you wanna see it, and you want to you know, relate to it with other human beings who are working hard to help other human beings. I think that's where um, you know, media comes in as opposed to just words. I think another thing is, is you know, you want to, you can't make a judgment about who wants to hear your message. You might imagine that, oh, people, you know, support goodwill because, you know, we give people a means to become self-sufficient. So what kind of person likes that? You know, we've been reaching out everywhere. We had a partnership, have a partnership going on with Vice, Viceland, which is a media company. And we were thinking, oh, maybe they could help spread the message because they care about the same values. But what it turns out is they had a lot of clothing and it's like, oh, well, we deal in clothing. So now we have some of their clothing with, that has been adapted by 10 different designers. They're using social media. We got something like 21 million impressions this week because a, a, a Michael B. Jordan stepped up and, and has tweeted it out. And, and we weren't thinking, oh, that's the crowd that's going to get goodwill out there. It's a matter of reaching out to everybody, seeing what affinity is there. And then that's the kind of, you know, coalition building that we're, that we're talking about. Just exactly. Creating, using the same tools that businesses do and that uh, politicians do and that sport figures do and celebrities do, but using it for civil society purposes. I'm going to uh, put Frank Villani on who asked uh, a question. Uh, let's, let's get Frank in on this discussion. And uh, Frank, yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, uh, why don't you uh, you ask the uh, the question that you had and make the point you had yourself? Right. So in San Antonio, uh, the arts are funded uh, through the hotel motel bed tax, right. which as in throughout the, the country has been decimated. So we decided um, as a community to get together, and we formed an alliance called Causa. Cultural Arts Unite for San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And it's 80 nonprofits that have gotten together. Um, and we've gotten center city development in our city to also get together with us. Um, and we've got the Alex Brezanio Leadership Group. And so what's happening is we're forming a platform that goes out to the community, like the Alex Brezanio one works specifically with the Latino population. So they're reaching out throughout those areas and we're putting together a platform that doesn't talk about any one of our organizations, but about how cultural arts need to exist in the city, how vitally important it is, and that um, we're going to national foundations, we're going to the government, we're beginning to look at all different levels that individually we probably wouldn't be able to uh, reach, but as a collective 80 different groups, and showing the impact of what we're doing, I think that makes a, a real difference. And as we're asking these foundations and everything to come in, we're saying donate to the central cause. We'll work amongst ourselves on what needs to happen to make sure that the arts are alive and vibrant in San Antonio. Um, and that was a, a little sticking point initially because so many people become territorial. Uh, but we, re we, re we realized at this point in time, um, that the territory is shrinking. And so the only way to make it better is to expand it uh, with a, a national and global reach saying it's not one, it's the entire community that needs to get together. We're so familiar with San Antonio, um, both on the nonprofit side, as well as the, uh, uh, the, the nonprofit media side, as well as the search side. We did the search for the head of the San Antonio Museum of Art uh, for Art Pace. 
We know about the witty. We know about that ecosystem, the McNay. I mean, great, great institutions. But it is true that sometimes these institutions function in a way that are that's very separate, where as your point is really important, right? The ecosystem is the same. The audiences move from institution to institution to institution. So if we start managing these ecosystems like it's, uh, it, it's Major League Baseball, right? Where the health of the whole is really important to the health of each individual institution, really, really important strategically, right? Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, the, when, when you talk about the witty, I mean, uh, Maurice is one of the, the driving forces on the resource committee like I am. And that's one of the things that we talk about is that um, the cross-pollination in a community like this is so important um, and that what needs to happen is exactly like you were saying, James, so many people say, oh, I know, I know magic theater, I know the witty, but you don't realize everything that these arts groups are doing and what the impact is to the overall community. And in this way, we're getting out and saying impact is what's important at a point when mental health is being drained left and right. That's now, so true. Now, I have a question for, for everyone who, who is on, and please others uh, join in. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is to create a revenue stream to content producers covering the nonprofit sector, right? We're struggling with this. Uh, but it's really important that we have a cohort of people who are talking about nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders in San Antonio, you know, in Los Angeles, uh, in rural America. It's really, really important because if we don't have that ecosystem, if people aren't reporting on the work of nonprofits, then um, we can't uh, gather the attention of the general public. Um, how do you think we can go about this? Um, one of the ways that we're trying to do, do this is to create a fund in which um, uh, we, are, we are paying uh, interns and uh, seeding those at different PBS stations, right? We have a lot of PBS partners from our Insight series and making sure that they're covering their nonprofits in, in certain regions. Um, do you think, um, you know, from your perspective, um, uh, 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 Frank, that uh, that kind of play uh, in a San Antonio would work where we actually have a few reporters who are just focused on nonprofit organizations, issues and leaders because the local media has, has suffered uh, in, incredibly in San Antonio. Yeah, I think that, you know, that to us was the, the key um, in also trying to expand the idea beyond just the arts by going to center city and talking about center city development. And uh, as you know, that uh, there was an or uh, organization here called the Revard Report. It's now morphed a little. Um, but th the key is that uh, because of the decimation of a lot of the local media, uh, the arts wasn't being co covered at all. So right. the, the real issue is, yes, getting into those areas and developing, as you said, your own content, which is what we're doing for the 80 collective groups. So you can give them the stories, you can give them the platforms, and they're able then to use them um, in a way to get across that message. And I think that message has to be a universal message. Uh, and that was one of the things that we kept saying, um, that exactly like you were saying with Goodwill, what, what is going on that we're doing that's bigger than any people coming to the magic theater here where children come and children can't even access the schools or anything. What are we gonna be doing? It's more about, we need to reach out to young people. We need to reach out to elderly all the way across the board. So I love that idea, Mark. Great, I'm gonna try and bring on uh, uh, Stacy Buchanan in here. She warns us that she has dogs in the background, but Stacy, you know, this is the modern uh, communication age. So I'm, I'm putting you on. Uh, you had said um, in, in uh, one of your questions, that we're not just talking about money, it's also about volunteers. One of the things, Stacy, that I'm really concerned about is that we seem in the nonprofit sector to have the, um, the problem that Jim Shadler was, was, uh, was mentioning, that some of our programs, some of our work is invisible. So how do we create visibility? How do you, how do you see this in terms of creating visibility so a volunteer knows 
that there's a need that, that he or she can fulfill, particularly in this time of pandemic where people are trying to find ways of making a positive contribution. Well, I actually used to work for Goodwill Southern California as part of their, their donation drive program. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and that was an excellent way for us to partner with other nonprofits throughout Southern California. And one thing I always thought we could always have done better was cross promote each other's organizations. Because if on our Facebook page, we can say, hey, look, we are working with this organization and then they could do the same, we could get all of our missions out and really better publicize all the good work that so many people are doing. And just the different ways that we partnered throughout um, the Inland Empire and Los Angeles County, it, it was a great avenue. And also I know um, Goodwill does the, the stand downs for homeless veterans which they brought together amazing resources and really, you really felt like you were helping that population, but I think it could be even bigger. I'm also, and, pretty, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, it seems like a theme here is, is collaboration, you know, and, and I think that will help get over a couple of hurdles. You know, one of the barriers to, you know, mainstream media is, is it newsworthy, right? And I think an exciting collaboration that's bigger than any one organization, that can turn into a newsworthy event. You know, if the right people are getting together and talking about the right topic, then that actually becomes newsworthy and everyone can benefit by the attention that, you, that no one could get on their own. So, I mean, even what Stacy, you were talking about things like that. If you get enough people coming together to do something, you know, a, a reporter will cover that, and then you then you are in that other sphere of influence. Um, you know, every now and then, you can't count on you know the the television station to you know run with every press release. But if you can get something big together, um, you know, with multiple organizations coming together, and I think we were all talking about the importance of that. You know, that's just one benefit. I, I feel like the biggest benefits are, you know, the thought coming together where we can really, you know, address problems together and the efficiencies and all of that. But again, none of that matters if nobody knows about it. So I think that that is one angle to, to getting, you know, the word out that so many organizations are active, um, you know, and I want to say essential, you know, every... Art's essential for, for, for mental health, like you were saying, Frank. Um, you know, jobs are essential to, to keep people, you know, away from food insecurity. And, um, you know, they can provide for themselves and their family and it, and it makes a sustainable community. All of these things are essential. And um, one thing that, you know, we don't wanna get lost and we don't wanna, you know, sound tone deaf to, to what's going on in terms of the health crisis, um, you know, but the world will go on and we, we need, all of the things that, that nonprofits are working to serve humanity with. So we're coming to the end of our time, but I have an ask for everyone who is attending. And, and my ask is this, uh, we need to have your opinions on how we should shape um, the offerings on moppenheim.tv. Uh, we have four different programs right now. We have uh, this series called the Nonprofit Report, which are these Zoom uh, uh, webinars. Uh, and then we have the Insight uh, collaboration with PBS stations around the country. We develop articles and we develop opinion pieces. Uh, we're trying to put together funds for content creators. Um, we heard from Rafa uh, some suggestions on uh, topicality uh, coverage across different nonprofits and then regional coverage, uh, as well as looking at demographics. The, the addition of demographics was, was quite interesting and I think we should explore that. We want to have your suggestions for how we ought to shape this initiative. Uh, Frank, your idea about collaboration um, in particular regions is really important. One of the questions that I have coming from, from that suggestion is, can we provide some sort of a backbone infrastructure to plug in to these types of collaborations and also to encourage them? Can we create some sort of a a funding base so that these type of uh, collaborations can share knowledge um, and, and get the word out in, in ways that are, that are more functional. 
So my ask to everybody here is that uh, please do uh, send in suggestions to us. We'll get uh, an email out to you. Um, your best ideas, uh, what you're trying right now. And then what I'm going to try and do is to put together a, an advisory group uh, to really shape um, a, a national capability to draw public attention to nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. It won't be connected to any one organization like yours, Jim, right? Or, or like the, uh, the ALO Cultural Foundation or, or some of the other organizations mentioned. It is really just a vehicle for everyone. Um, and we'll see whether, whether together we can actually improve the situation. So thank you, Jim, uh, Shayla, thank you so much for, for joining me and keeping me from looking like a, like a totally awkward uh, presenter. Really appreciate it. Wafa, thank you. Uh, Stacy, thank you. Frank, uh, thank you very much for joining. And this won't be the last call in show. We hope to actually have a very vigorous discussion and interactive discussion so that we can help improve things uh, for America and for civil society. Uh, everybody, that's the nonprofit report. Thank you for attending. Mask up and have a have a really great day. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.